Hi, Beans. Thanks for joining me for part two as I talk to the cast and the crew of the movie Phobias. And you know, it's very likely we just might talk about perks and talk about the Indiegogo. Great. <laughs> I'm going to throw a, a question out to the, uh, the gentlemen actors. You guys are working with these incredibly strong women, and both the actors and the characters. Are you anticipating that as being, a, um, being able to fall into your given roles easily? Is that going to be something that is going to be a challenge? Because oftentimes in films, it is the men who are the strong characters. And this is different and beautifully so. So instead of there being like one strong woman, there's just all these strong women. So we'll start with you, uh, Mike, you're, you're on. Okay. Um, uh, I will say for this role, uh, it's actually probably perfect because I am that kind of sheltered, I'm that quiet, I'm that hard to keep that eye like you know while doing that like eye to eye focus with someone else like you know i'll be that kind of guy who's like quickly cringes and kind of turns his head away so it actually makes it real uh, simple for me i mean fortunately i was raised in a house full of nothing but independent women uh, like you know i, I, I have like a uh, like my mom uh, like deep 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 deep, deep southern bell and i had two uh, sisters and my dad told me from a very young age son Pick your battles extremely wisely because you do realize we are outnumbered here. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wise man. <laughs> but, but I'm also really super uh, excited about this. I mean, like I said, we, we get, I, I, I get to work with some people I've worked with before. I've worked with Chris on Blaze Summer Camp. Um, and now we're working again uh, for Phobias. And uh, Julie, I've worked with a few times now. Uh, we've worked on Blaze Summer Camp, uh, Kill on Arrival. And uh, we're going to be working on uh, uh, Go Away Together. So I'm really excited to uh, see them. And I'm absolutely honored to be a part of Emily's first film. I think this is going to be awesome, Emily. I think you're going to have a blast. Uh, I can't speak for everyone, but I do know a lot of these people, they're crazy, they're fun, and you're going to have a great time. I, I promise yeah. that. Uh, and like everyone else knew, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, who's been here, I've not had a chance to work with. I'm really excited to work with all of them because that's the great thing about the horror community. Like we're all a tight knit family. And just because we haven't worked together, doesn't know, that doesn't mean we don't know each other. Like, you know, from friends of friends working on other projects, you know, usually you think, Oh, you know, this person, I know them, but I haven't worked with them yet. And I'm like, Oh, well you're about to score. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is something else I, I actually, I have noticed and that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm very grateful to have, in this interesting way, become a part of it. But the indie, the indie horror family really is like a family. You know, um, mm -hmm. people. I have a question for you, Donna Jean. Yeah. Would you ever want to be in a movie then? Like, what are your thoughts? And would you ever want to step on the other side? Even you could be a reporter oh. or just like anything that came naturally. Or like, do you have any aspirations to jump in there and be in with all of us? Come join us. That's a good <laughs> call. <laughs> ever thought about it i'm i've always been a kind of person that liked to talk to people and the that's how i started doing the interviews you know it was really going to the horror cons volunteering and getting to know people and then saying hey do you mind if i film you since we're talking anyway <laughs> kind of thing i never thought about it and at this point i think i'm kind of old <laughs> to 
to be getting. No, no, no. no. Uh, Never. We'll, we'll get you in something there, Donna Jean. Uh, <laughs> you could be an extra or a, a, a dead body or something, you know? <laughs> and uh, Actually, yeah. there are cats. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, well, you're asking about strong women and how, how the male actors are going to do it. Yeah. Poor Chris, man. You got to ask Chris. <laughs> you're, poor Chris, man. Let's just say that it's, it's, he's in a, I think he's in one of the greatest positions ever to be browbeaten by a horror icon. <laughs> I do appreciate it. I am, um, Helen's a uh, whipping boy, from my understanding. Oh, okay. <laughs> sounds sounds yeah. different. <laughs> yeah, usually I'm the victim or the killer in these movies, so <laughs> being the whipping boy is a little different. Um, have you had any kind of an opportunity yet? I know you haven't started filming yet. Have you had an opportunity to play any of this out, um, either in your mind or talking? about it because it's it's sounds like a it's little be interesting. um when i did my audition for uh key 13 i actually filmed it as the scene i actually um my wife and i did the whole scene together for my audition and yeah yeah i enjoyed it immensely <laughs> from my understanding um uh, my wife is awesome um but uh it was fun and i i i yeah, it turned out well. I think I kind of had this impression of like, oh, I'm about to get beaten, aren't I? But uh, <laughs> but also just like on it, like trying to also have a genuine like feeling of I'll I'll do what you want, ma'am. Really, it's, it's, the pain's not necessary. Just tell me what you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> and his audition was absolutely great, by the way. But him and his wife, they typically do auditions like that together, and they are always entertaining to watch. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, because of Rowan's just presence, she has a very strong screen presence. Um, we 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 saw her that we we're just you know when Chris was auditioning for. Uh, serious profession and we saw her and we're like okay hey Chris can you ask her to come join us for this and when she did she played uh, Ellen's part in their audition videos and <laughs> it was an absolute stitch it was just <laughs> absolutely hilarious the two of them together are a really good team they should just like make a movie together or Chris and, and Mike McGlynn uh, should uh, also make a movie together. I think if you put the three of them together, I'm, I'm seriously trying to figure out the best script for that because <laughs> it would be absolutely <laughs> hilarious. And I do think a, a short with the three of us would be probably pretty funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there will be an extra in that one. Um, <laughs> be perfect. I, if you want to see us working together, our, our first scene together is actually in Bloody Summer Camp. And that film oh, should be coming yes. out in just a couple months. I'm um, waiting for that one to come out. <laughs> I've actually I've been in a couple of projects with Michael, but and I've worked helped him behind the scenes, but we've yet to actually share the same film space. Yeah. We've been in the so, same movies, but never the same scene together. <laughs> exactly. So we have a running gag that like eventually, eventually we'll work together. <laughs> <laughs> together and really together exactly so and, and guess I'd what uh we're keeping the trend alive they do not have any scenes together <laughs> <laughs> why break a good streak at this point right exactly exactly <laughs> why why not saying you should write something we'll, we'll figure it out yeah but yeah <laughs> well i'm gonna ask heather a question um so you play this succubi. Yes. Am I saying that correctly? Um, do you have any anticipation of like what to expect, how you're going to get into character? Uh, it, it sounds um, like it could be kind of fun and interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what they expect of me, but I am excited and um ready to be creepy i mean i <laughs> like i said i got my my start in acting in the haunt industry so it it feeds my soul to terrify others <laughs> i should say so um 
I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, thinking about my movements and, and things like that. Um, most definitely how I would play it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what I'll look like. I don't know exactly what they, they want from me, but I've definitely been, um, been pondering on it and have some well, good ideas. Well, I can answer that one with Heather. We're going to make her look ses- sexy AF. And, uh, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna utilize, you know, the, 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 the sexiness that she has inside and really we're going to make it outside. But the key thing with all the second by with Monique and April love and, uh, Salome, uh, and Heather, uh, we're going to, because of the fear of the character, the Dieter's character is, is of the f- women. We're going to put them as the different kinds of women that a guy who's afraid of one would be afraid of. So, you know, the specific okay. look I'm not going to go into, but every single one of the succubi is going to be uh, sexy AF. And so <laughs> when they finally get to Dieter, oh, well, you know, <laughs> practical effects are going to be awesome. I'm excited yeah. to see this. I'm when excited. do you start filming? I know you haven't started yet. When do you start filming? Well, we, uh, we've we got Serious Profession film uh, getting ready to f- start filming. That has first position. Uh, that will be finished uh, by sep- uh, end of August, early September. And then we have like three, two, two and a half, three weeks off. And then two we and hit, a half weeks. Yeah. yeah, two and a half weeks. And then we hit phobias right after that. Um, we have, uh, and then we'll film two days in September and four days in October uh, so that Ellen can get her scenes done. Cause she like Julie and um, so many others have such a busy schedule that we want to maximize that time. Um, fortunately, you know, some of our folks are, are more local, so we can, you know, if we need to do pickups, but with like Julie and with Ellen and, and Heather, because of the, where they're located, we have to kind of, um, maximize our time. So it's going to be a very, very tight shooting schedule. I mean, just there, the, we're talking probably at least 12 hour days, if not. If not longer, <laughs> yeah. Um, but that'll but, add to the torment of all. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So genuine. Oh yeah. It's like an average day on set to me. It's <laughs> <laughs> not one more moment. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but fortunately, the 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 layout of the, the script is that we can actually do that, where we can actually put, um, we can compartmentalize a lot easier, so we can do a batch of scenes that take place in different parts of the movies all in one time in one day or two days where we're not having to like go back and forth and worry about continuity. We can keep the continuity because we can pretty much like the scenes with Julie and um, Mike and Emily and the other prisoners. Uh, We can film all those prison scenes in order. Then when Ellen comes in, for the first day then we can just do the insert shots where she comes in points to whoever her victim is and yank them out so that's one of the nice things about this is that we can film huge chunks of it in chronological order they even though they take place in different parts but we can still film it and then maximize that so everybody's going to be in that particular headspace and then once they're out of that and then we put them in the maze which is going to be a built maze and not, not just like three walls moved around, uh, unless, of course, we don't make the budget, then it may just be that. Um, I don't think it will be, though. But um, um, we're actually building the maze and putting them in through it. That's going to be the fun part. And realistically, uh, a lot of the dialogue sequences aren't going to be the, the, the hardest. It's, it's going to be filming those special effects that, and the preparation work for those special effects, getting uh, is, you know everyone into makeup. These days will clearly be longer than 12 hours. The makeup jobs for some of the, our actors could take upwards of four, six, eight hours, maybe longer. Um, it's, going to, it's going to be a lot 
of preparation that goes into that. Um, and that is definitely going to be the hardest part of, of making this all work. The good news is, though, is that Julie and Emily and Mike, they all got uh, one uniform. So <laughs> they don't know that they're not. For once, they are actually going to be in probably the most comfortable clothing they will have ever worn in any film. It's Wait, Heather. <laughs> yeah, it's it's and no Heather. hair and makeup either. I don't yeah. think that us. Minimal. I mean, Mike might need like I don't know. He might have oh. some glamour shots going on, but I think that us, us <laughs> we need really don't need that much prep. We're going to be super like just you know ready to roll. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's going to be Heather and the, Heather and Monique and April and uh, Sally and uh, of course the people are people playing the monsters. They are going to have the extensive makeup jobs. The rest of them just we're just going to it's just you know very minimal. So uh, that's part of part of what's going to make it fun. Uh, the actors don't all necessarily have to wear you know you know Julie. She's got one of the most killer wardrobes i have ever seen yes she and, does we love you julie I love you. You <laughs> but, uh, so you know the the victims get a little bit of a break in this one so scrubs are so comfortable dude they really are oh, yeah it was great <laughs> well it sounds like you guys are going to be working some really long days and Julie and I became fr come friends actually on the Killed on Arrival scene when I interviewed her there and just fell in love with you. And I know you are a very, very busy woman. <laughs> and I, since I, I follow you on social media to kind of keep an eye on what, what you're doing, do you have any suggestions to people about like how to kind of come down at the end of these busy, crazy days? Because I know that's something that you've been talking about i think that you have to shut it off there has to be a point where you have a little bit of time where you're just like clear and you definitely have to get rest at some point um, i think being by yourself is really helpful sometimes to go off and walk actually another actress very recently taught me something where i was like there's no way that i could fit in time she goes for walks i mean well she does more exercising than i think i could physically fit in she's but, amazing um, i know what you're talking about she, heather knows what i'm talking about yeah, but she, yeah I'm, she's she's also like very inspirational she's great sorry i mean yeah. you, but i was on set oh, no you. not I'm at all there. but yeah but exactly heather saw yeah. the same thing where like this 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 actress um Dylan, she went for walks and she would just go and look at nature yeah. and she just would take a minute away and i thought that that was really important because she went and she would find like a little like river running through something or she would go and look at something that we wouldn't see that would just take her into like peaceful mode for just a little bit and when you're on like the super intense especially like very emotionally draining sets. I think the best thing you can do, there's another actress that actually would put on meditation on her headphones and go walk away. So I think things like that are really important because you have to recharge because otherwise you're just going to be super, you're going to have nothing left to give because you're giving it all for these scenes and on set. So I think that's the only advice that I would give is watch, watch other people, look for people that have recommendations on maybe something different that they do because I mean, it's, it, it is inspiring to think of different ways that people kind of recharge themselves and get back yeah. to it and have something to give back. So, so there you go, Emily, you got some, uh, you got some tips from a pro. <laughs> got, some, got some lessons. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. We would just look, I look over and she'd just be over there jogging, but yeah, oh, during cool. our down, <laughs> during our downtime, she, yeah, she, she found all kinds of pretty stuff as we were filming, um, yeah. you know, well, the uh -huh. area, but. You, there, there's nothing pretty. The only pretty thing there is going to be the uh, you all uh, because this is, a, it is then. this is a this is a barn. Uh, it, it, it's a literal barn. Um, it's huge <laughs> and it's dark and the maze is going. If the, ma the ma if we get the budget that we're asking for, the maze is going to be pretty cool. If we get the budget we're hoping, it's going to be Hellraiser two. Awesome. 
Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll That's see. what I'm hoping. When, that is really you, uh, what I'm hoping. Well, yeah. When are you building the maze? Because I would love to come help build the maze. <laughs> uh, that's a that's an excellent question, Heather. And let me to intru- let me into ex- uh, extrapolate. Uh, <laughs> the funding campaign for phobias will start on 21 April. The funding campaign for serious profession ends. The funding campaign for phobias begins. Um, we're go- the initial, we're probably going to wind up having to do two. Uh, the first one is just to get us the money to pay for the set, to build the set, and to get the special effects ready. That's going to cost quite a bit, about $15,000 to just get that part done. Um, and then, of course, obviously, if we make all our, if we make that plus, the stretch goals, um, you know, that's going to make it even better. Uh, then the second one may be a lot smaller, but we want to make sure that we get the set built first, um, get the special effects ready to go. And we have our monster actors or suit actors picked out so that we can put them all in there so that when Julie and Ellen and everybody else gets to set, we're ready to go. We, we boom, you know, they come in, they get, they do their things. They go, you know, they go back home and everybody gets to go back home. You know, we want to make sure that everything's that. So that that's the first, that's our primary goal, you know, and obviously to get the money to pay the actors because they all deserve every single um, dollar that they get, even though it's not as much as we would like um, to give them, you know, we'd love to give them, you know, we wish we had a hundred thousand dollar budget, but uh, if we make that much, then you know everybody's paycheck's going to go up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, but the set is the key, and because the set is such an integral part, and you know, we have to set it because the maze is where seventy five percent of the movie takes place, um, and then the remaining twenty five percent takes place in cells and in the finale, which we're not going to even go into that because, uh, although I will say we have two Emily's on set, just like we will have three Matt's on set. (laughs) Oh yeah. Uh, Because we have Emily Whitcomb, who's playing Elsa, who is uh, Ellen's character, Becky. That's her girlfriend. So we have two Emily's working on the set. And, uh, so that, you know, that that's going to be a lot of fun. So not only we have Emily uh, in her uh, very first role, uh, Emily Flack here in her first role, but we'll have another Emily. So we'll have two Emilys, three mats, and... Uh, a partridge in a pear tree. Bunch of us, yeah. <laughs> Are we going to have nicknames or something? Are they going to like, hi, my name is Matt L, or are we going to have nicknames for him? Uh, we're, it's probably going to be... Uh, it's probably going to be the the gore guy, uh, Dieter, because Matt Burns is playing Dieter, and then that jerk director. <laughs> <laughs> I like. <laughs> So, so that's probably I'm probably gonna uh, you know, they're probably gonna be oh yeah man that's great that's great and they're gonna walk off a stupid idiot don't know what he's doing oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay it's okay it's the job I signed up for. <laughs> yeah, everyone and, and people are going to be mad at Craig because he's going to be like, okay, yeah, not enough blood. We need more. Yeah, more, yeah, more. more blood. Yeah. More blood. Yeah. Dunk it over yeah. him. I don't think anyone should be mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not in horror. <laughs> no, new, nope, new. Nope. For, for a guy like me with these hairy arms, when you put <laughs> pro- the the prosthetics on my arms and you glue that stuff on there. Oh baby, uh, you gave me nightmares. I was like, "Wait a minute! Oh dear, yeah. is that a monster?" Yeah. Ooh, um, because I, I I used to do uh um call it moulage for uh disaster exercises, and so of course you know I would occasionally have to show them how to do it, so I'd have to put it on there, and I'm just like pulling it off, and you actually see patches of hair. 
that are missing because I pulled off. Well, pulled off the well board. years That's years so ago, good. the Amos brothers and I were were doing a, a bunch of haunted houses every October, and I decided that uh, I was going to be in the haunted house one time as a self eating cannibal. And uh, the blood that we had created was with the corn syrup. And it was all over me. I mean, all over me. I didn't take into account that my clothes were going to then be literally stuck to my skin afterwards. So the literally patches of hair everywhere being ripped off. And uh, yeah, that, that's when I decided that I would rather subject my actors to that than me you know <laughs> well, that's very kind. Yeah, i was just thinking you're adding to your costume for the next night uh, with all these patchless <laughs> hair spots it's a good point <laughs> your cannibal I mean, is just making spaghetti yeah. <laughs> and i feel bad for for like because you know the these actors they're with the yeah the, all these actors they're just gonna have there's good oh my gosh i mean just just the the things we're gonna have to do to them. Um, <laughs> no corn syrup, I promise. No corn syrup ever yeah. again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it you're gonna you know with, with these practical effects, you know, they, they, they're they're we we have created really oh, and I like really good characters, but you know what? That's not gonna save them from getting severely mutilated at some point. <laughs> Welcome to the family, Emily. <laughs> 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 well, as Craig's likes to say, uh, he wants to give people nightmares. And yes. uh, so mm -hmm. uh, just, yeah, I mean, Emily's death, oh, it's yeah. going to be particularly fun. And oh, it's, uh, it's going to be a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Boy, it got quiet well, here real quick. I know. Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know, Craig. Uh, kick, kick on any more about the Indiegogo? Did you want to give any throwouts about perks or anything now? Or do you want to hold off on that until Serious Profession is done? Uh, well, I can kind of give a little bit of a, of a sneak on some of the perks that we're going to be doing. Um, there is going to be one of the perks, um, the, uh, the, one of the characters' deaths. Uh, you will actually be able to buy yourself away onto the set to be one of the people that kills the character. And I'm not saying like you're on screen, but the way that this one character dies um, everybody who's on set on that day is going to have fun with it. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so everybody pretty much it's going to be during the, it's, it's one of the last things we have to film because what we have to do is so messy. And <laughs> so, and especially if we don't get it taken care of as soon as we're done. And if we have to do multiple takes, everybody um, look at Julie's face. I love your face. <laughs> oh my god, I, I want to see that. <laughs> That's one thing about me whenever I do these things, I can't help it. I I my face just does I make weird faces. I'm sorry. No, not weird. It was so perfect for what Matt was saying cuz yeah. you were just like ew. Yeah. I was just thinking about whatever um all the horrible things in the script, just the nasty things that are going to happen. <laughs> And, and believe me, that's that's relatively tame compared to some of the stuff Craig and I have written. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a really fun perk, though. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, you, a you, fan. And yeah. that's the one thing about indie and really the fundraising is you really do see the way that the filmmakers, the actors, and the audience really are working in this together. And that's what you're doing with the Indigo. Where you're inviting people to come on and and do this with you. Right. And, and I that's... think that's so important. It does give fans because that's one of the reasons why I even became an actor and why I continue to be is to be part of experiences like this for things that I would want to watch. So I think that is a great point you just made about the funding campaigns is, you know, there are so many ways for people to literally be part of the experience and, and really like be immersed in it. And it gives them another way that, that, wasn't you know thought of back when i was a kid or something like that just more opportunities exactly. 
to actually not just be a fan, but you're, you're being a supporter, but you're getting a lot back because your support is also giving you a way to physically and mentally be in something that you are supporting. Right. And, and, you know, because of this, this perk um, there, of course, will be other perks like, uh, you know, producer credits, uh, assistant producer credits, things like that. Um, and then there are, there are a couple that I can't go into right now. Um, but let's just say that if it's on set, more than likely to people will probably be able to get a piece of it. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's, it's not just, you know, the typical stuff, which is producer perks and sign posters and DVDs and Blu-rays and all that stuff, which, you know, that's all very important stuff. I mean, I'm, uh, Craig and I are both collectors, so, you know, we love collecting that stuff. I gotta um, say, I'm all for coffee mugs, too. Yeah. <laughs> that's my coffee mug at work. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, we're... It's kind of awkward at work. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Um, we're still developing them, and thanks to Chris and Mike, uh, both of them have been instrumental in helping us with the Serious Profession funding campaign. But with their help, we got to 30% funded in the first week, which was pretty great we're still you know that's still going on and uh, i firmly expect that their help on phobias is going to be even better um because you know serious profession and i know i keep talking about it but it is one of our big projects it's not a horror film so it's a little bit different marketing than a horror film a horror film can sell itself which is the wonderful thing about horror is it sells itself, you know, mm -hmm. especially when you come up with something different, like, like phobias, we feel phobias is, is different enough that it still plays the horror to the horror film crowd, but also adds a little something for like me, the science fiction guys. And so, um, so, you know, that, that's kind of really two different, Two, you know, apples and oranges, both are fruit, but very different flavors. So mm -hmm. thankfully, That's something that's very um, impressive. And within the first few days, like you, you were at 10, then 20%, and then now you're at 30. Like that is really impressive, actually, for a non-horror film in this community, I think. Like for yeah, what you've already me. gathered together. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, fan films that are made uh, with superheroes, even that don't see that kind of uh, budget or that kind of rise. So, you know, yeah. that's a big yeah. uh, pat on the bat right there. <laughs> well, it, it and is. Could I get in and say, isn't this, um, isn't that Serious Profession T13's first film? Yes. It You're is. only about a year old, if I'm correct. Yes. Though. Yes. Yeah. We, we celebrated our one year anniversary November 13th. And there's a little hint on where the 13 came from. Uh, good thing we didn't film it on the 20th. Uh, E20. I've seen some of their work, though, with uh, the short film Hoodie, which I, I thought it was an excellent short film. Um, I think if so, if you want people want to get a taste of what Key 13 can do for phobias or for serious profession, look up Hoodie on YouTube or up the other social platforms. You can see some of their skill. Right. And uh, we have Paralyzed coming out, which Chris worked on with us. Uh, it was a lot was, of fun. Yeah. And he actually helped me get through because you're funny. I love talking, but I hate doing funding videos. I'm just <laughs> not good at it. And Chris was like, Matt, just do this, do this, say this, you'll be fine. And right. Just write yourself right. a little script and it makes it easier. <laughs> yeah. if, you kind of, if you kind of organize your thoughts on what you want to say, I do that. And then it makes it easier. Otherwise, I'm just rambling and I'm yeah. <laughs> and, and that's exactly the same advice Chris gave, and it was very helpful. And yeah, uh, it definitely, it definitely makes a difference. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So <laughs> I like yeah. to ramble. I find it to plus my writing is just my handwriting's terrible. I think if I wrote something down, I'd be like, what? And in the middle, I'd go, hold on. I don't know what I just, what that word is. Oh, oh, I can't that, read my that, own writing. <laughs> that happens read. to me all the time. I mean, look at that handwriting. I mean, you can't tell what that is. I could be writing, I could be writing in Japanese or something. Um, Mine's my hand, really my, my, you know, it's just, it's impossible. I mean, it looks like Klingonese, you know, Star Trek. Um, and actually, there are times when I've written my stuff down and I write it up and I look back and I, what did I mean by that? <laughs> what was I saying? 
Um, so I understand what you said, Julie, hundred percent. I'm, I'm right there with you. There's so bad handwriting. I had an idea really quick about a perk for, sure. for phobias in theory. What if, I don't know how expensive it would be if you made like one of each of the monsters, like a figure and did like a blind box as the perk. So there's one of each of the monsters because you're not giving it away. You're not telling them what the monsters look like ahead of time. It's a blind box that they'll get after the movie is, you well, know, I after we're done. With it. That would exactly. Be such a cool perk, actually. That would be great. You and could, and, and, and the there. price would be, well, the price would definitely would be, be a factor. Of course, if we're doing six of them, seven, maybe? About seven. Well, actually, no, six, because one of them is kind of, you know, not there. Uh, that one, that, that one will be easy. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just sell what, what that monster is made out of. <laughs> it's still put in the box. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You, you could get one of six, six figures or whatever the last thing is, <laughs> which again, we can't really go into too much detail because if we do it'll kind of spoil it um yeah yeah i i will say this that i do feel sorry the guys that we're looking at for bora may not want us to pick them because they're not going to be happy <laughs> and it's the last day of filming too so it's like you know it's going to be the big you know right before we yell out that's a wrap <laughs> is what we're going to do because like i said it is the messy of all the things we do it's going to be the messiest oh my gosh yeah yeah <laughs> but if that if that doesn't sell the movie right there i then i really don't understand the horror community at all i'm just, I'm just going to stick to writing movies like serious profession and uh and anarchy and things like that <laughs> But hopefully we can catch up to each other as this progresses. I'm really, really excited to see about where this goes. Uh, once the Indiegogo gets out there, you know, um, I'm all for talking about like, further again. Maybe we can uh, get on board. Around we'll campaign time. time. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll, we'll just uh well donna jean uh you and uh tom uh tui work it together and just let us know and we will make a date to come back and do it again it's a date <laughs> thank you fiends out there for joining us and we will see you at the movies bye <laughs> Thanks for joining me for that awesome interview. I really loved talking to those guys and ladies. And by the way, just in case you didn't hear, news went out this morning that a friend of mine is going to do some voice work on phobias.